Fuzz Lab. Today I would like to talk to you about a phenomenon of exploding capacitors. I ran into this a while ago with my NVIDIA 8800 GT video card. Now I got this card used for $15. Surprise, surprise! And yeah, it's an old, outdated, cheap card, but I'll be honest with you, I mean for like Minecraft and Pong, the kind of games that I play, it's more than enough. Um, the other day I was editing a video, I was doing a video about R2-D2 toy that I hacked and talking about Walt Disney and how they have bought out Star Wars and I, I was shrinking down these pictures to make subliminal images of attractive women and green dresses and Newport cigarettes, trying to do a little joke on subliminal advertising with the Disney Corporation because I also found uh, public service announcement with C-3PO and R2-D2 or R2-D2 was smoking a cigarette. So, long story short, I'm shrinking these pictures down and all of a sudden, snap, real loud out of the <laughs> out of the tower and I knew what it was. A few months before that, we were, I don't know what we were doing, but we heard this little explosion. We couldn't figure out what it was. A couple days later, another one, you know, snap, it's, it's like a loud snap. It's really loud. My kids heard it in the other room with their door shut. So then it was, uh, it was the morning of an event for this game called War Commander. I play on Facebook and I'm getting ready to do, it's like a four day event. It's a really challenging game and you, it's a war game. You fight these other people. So I'm all getting ready for the event. And sure enough, and the screen just goes black basically. So I open, crack the case and open it up and pull out the video card and sure enough, tops of the capacitors are like four of them were blown out the metal there's a little plus that's like kind of stamped into the tops of these capacitors so when they fail they'll pop on the top and they won't rupture and debris won't fly out and cause any other further complications so I ended up I, I looked into it and it turns out I mean if you type in this model number card it comes up a lot of these capacitors are blowing up in these cards. And it's not just that model video card that's suffering. I guess there's a lot of poorly manufactured capacitors. There was a run in China or somewhere like that where a lot of the caps were just no good. So there's a, quite a bit of consumer electronics that's suffering from this premature capacitor failure. Um, so if you do run into that, if you have a device that, you know, it's not under warranty, but you've only had it for a little while. You can open it up, uh, take a look, and if you if you inspect the capacitors, capacitors are the things they look like a, a little battery kind of. You know, that's basically what they look like. They have all different styles of them. Um, here's a more common looking one, uh, and if you if you look at the top of them, they're supposed to be flat. If the top is bulged or if it's like separated and opened up, you got a bad cap. Now, it will be important for you to identify the type of capacitor. They have normal electrolytic capacitors are these the common ones that are blue or black. And then they have these solid aluminum capacitors that are listed as low ES. Uh, low, I'm not exactly sure, but this, this is a solid aluminum capacitor. Now, they do have these those capacitors available on eBay. And I have read about some people getting bad counterfeit chips and bad capacitors on eBay. So we want to make sure you do your homework if you're going to... You know, I mean, the frustrating situation about obtaining parts for electronics is oftentimes you run into paying a shipping cost or a minimum order, which makes it tough if you're just trying to replace, you know, one component. So you may be tempted to take the easy way out and just throw five bu bucks at, you know, easy Joe Cool 666 on eBay, but you never know. I mean, this guy, so do your homework. You don't want to end up with a bad capacitor. Now, as far as the actual replacement goes, it really isn't that difficult. I used a higher wattage iron. I think this is like, uh, is it a 25? It's a 40. I used a 40, 
And so what you're going to do is locate the failed part. You flip it over on the back and you're going to see two little pins sticking out with small solder points on them. So what I did, I laid it on there so the soldering iron was touching both of those points and at the same time applying reverse pressure, pulling away from the board. And with a little bit of English on that iron and a, a little bit of pressure side to side with the, pin, the pins would be, you know, like this. So I'm rocking it this way came right out. Now the other way you could do it is you could take a little bit of solder, put a blob on the end of your tip, and then put that blob on top of the pin on the back so you've got a big bubble of solder that's going to heat it up real good, really kind of distribute the heat evenly around there, and then pull it out like that. Then you got kind of a mess, you're going to heat up the board more. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to do this, and I did, I replaced Initially, I found one of the values and I bought a five pack of the other ones. There were two values of capacitors that had blown. There was four total that failed. So I did that and then, you know, about six months went by and like I was saying the other day when I'm editing, again. So I went and purchased replacements off of eBay <laughs> and we'll see how those work out. Initially, like I said, I was editing. I, I put, I put a, I put a regular, um, not a solid aluminum, just a regular uh, electrolytic, a regular capacitor in there. Why can't I talk? <laughs> I need a drink. Yeah, I put a regular cap in there and it worked fine. I had that cap in there for about a week, maybe a little more. But you really wouldn't want to chance it, like I said. It calls for the low ESD solid aluminum. Now, as far as those parts go, I did a little snoop, snooping around on the forums. These guys are talking about it. Um, Nick, NIC... Nichion or Nihikon, something. Nihikon. Nihikon. N I H I C O N. Boy, that's a big word, kids. Nihikon and Sanyo. There's. Um, Panasonic makes them. There is. A polymer replacement. The LS series is supposed to be really good. Sanyo ones, Panasonics are supposed to be good, but it's low ESR capacitor, not low ESD. Low ESR is what you're going to be looking for. So if you run into this, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm no expert on this new types of capacitors. I don't even know how to pronounce them or what they're called. I know when it happened, I recognized right off the bat that they weren't normal electrolytics. I googled up the model number on my card. Actually, there is a forum called badcapacitor.com. <laughs> And they talk about, you know, where to get replacement parts and how you go through this procedure. So this video, the idea with this was just to show you it's not that big of a deal replacing a capacitor. Uh, the tricky part is making sure that you get the correct replacement part. So that's where you're going to let your fingers do the walk and Google. Do your homework on that. But uh, I'm going to pop this car back in. What I did, you know, I had the regular electro cap in place of the one that had failed recently. And it worked fine. And I can't believe it. I Three of these failed, and it was still running when that fourth one went the day of the War Commander event. That's when it pooped out on me. So uh, I was amazed. But, you know, on the other hand, you don't really want to be running your stuff when <laughs> it's got blown parts. It could put a stress on the motherboard or the power supply. Something, something goofy like that could happen. Speaking of power supplies, I understand that's another source. Um, you know, if you're like a hacker type and you like recycling stuff like I do, I believe that inside the computer power supplies or motherboards, any more high-tech type of equipment, if you have access to old junk equipment, motherboards that are newer, you, you're a good chance you're going to find some of these solid aluminums in there. So before you throw that anything electronic out, you know, it's a good idea to take a look at what's in there. You know, grab your iron, rip some of those parts out, throw them in your junk drawer if you're like me or... You know, I mean, that might be pushing a little bit, but hey, you never know. And it's it's nothing like having to sit around and wait for two weeks for some parts for China, pay the shipping, spending an hour looking it up, you know. So uh, with that, good luck. I hope this doesn't happen to any of, any of you guys that are my loyal fans, the people that suffer through these things. Hope this doesn't happen to you. It's really frustrating, you know. I mean, don't we got enough on our minds to have to worry about, you know, if you hear that noise, you know what's going on. Power it down and check it out. I bet it's your video card. So, without further ado, uh, thanks again for the views. Subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And keep on.